all right how you all doing guys today we have intel publishing the arc gpu story and they're promising to launch their whole arc lineup globally later this year so as you can see intel is preparing their truck intel arc truck i don't know as you can see so yeah <laughs> i guess that's the that's a sign i guess but I mean, I'm, I want to see them launching their GPUs. I mean, otherwise, there's no point of, you know, working on this. They have to launch it anytime soon. Otherwise, they're not going to capture any market share and stuff like that. They haven't mentioned anything about Intel 3rd generation CPUs, though. So, we don't know. Like Maybe it's only focusing on ARC, I guess. And as you can see here... Intel Arc GPUs are scheduled for release later this year with, as Ryan explained, lots of game on driver updates with launch day support for the biggest titles and ongoing improvements for old older games too. For more information on Intel Arc graphics, go to arc.intel.com, basically what's, that's the story coming from. Ryan's Twitter or the Intel Insider Discord, so there's a Discord server that you can join. Whenever available, the Intel Arc cards can be purchased through various retailers and PC builds globally, as well as di directly via the Intel store. So, let's see what happens. Later this year, they're gonna be launching this. That being said, Intel Arc A750's benchmark, well, first party benchmark coming from Intel, has been done nearly 50 games, DX12 and Vulcan games. So, this is a rough image about their own benchmark and that is compared to 30 RTX 3060 and as you can see here it's 1.03 times faster in 1080p on average in 4040p it's 1.05 times faster in 1080p Vulcan, Vulcan it's 1.04 and Vulcan 1440p is 1.05 times faster so yeah same thing and we have a broader picture if you go down below before that let's see into the system configuration and for the game set one we have like intel with i9 12900k and videos rtx 3060 will also go in pairing with i9 12900k and we have asus rog maximus for both and well yeah rtx 3060 a750 and everything else doesn't really matter. Same thing. And if you look into the 50 games benchmark, that's their benchmark. So I'm going to take this as a grain of salt. We, uh, we, we do know they are showing the uh, settings. Ultra, 1080p Ultra, 44p High. Same goes for RDX 3060. So in, let's look into the Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And you, as you can see, Arc is getting 67. Whereas 3060 is getting 76, so losing basically. Okay, no problem. They're honest about it. On Battlefield 40, 2042, they're getting 75. RTX 3060 is getting 77. Uh, Battlefield 5, 133, 143. Uh, and there, there's the list that goes on. And as you can see here, Doom Eternal, Dota 2, Rainbow Six Siege. All the daters are here, so if you're interested to see what this data shows, even though I would suggest you to wait for the reviews when the card even releases, of course, and then, you know, make your mind buying this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be looking into the first party benchmarks. Next up for today, we have DDR5 6000 memory will be the sweet spot for AMD Ryzen 7000 Zen 4. And which will offer the one is to one infinity fabric ratio. So as coming from WCCF Tech, they're claiming that AMD Zen 4 CPUs will have a very sweet spot for DDR5 6000 uh, RAM. Uh, yeah, basically RAMs. And if you look into the previous generation uh, sweet spot for memory, as you can see on. Ryzen 3000 it was 3800 and Ryzen 5000 it's 4000 but 
to be honest, I don't really agree with, because, like, really we don't see that much difference anyway. If we look into the benchmarks, you won't find that much difference. And now for 7,000, they're going for 6,000 DDDR5. I guess DDDR5 is okay, but don't you think 6,000 is way too much? Because they're still expensive to even get one. So assuming the price gets lower, still, I don't know if six, DDDR5, 6,000 mega transfer per second would be the sweet spot. I don't know about that, we'll see. Benchmarks will tell everything about which is gonna be the sweet spot until now it's just a claim next up we have amd preparing their new packaging for ryzen 7000 look at that they're going ham with their new processors they're gonna be good no doubt about it but the looks well they're changing that not too much just some i really like this design because it's minimalistic in the corner we have amd ryzen logo yeah this is the ryzen 9 7900 I guess or it could be higher I don't know and look at the box it's very minimalistic nothing crazy but it looks slick I like it and with this boxes we also have some like a guess about pricing like the, as you can see that's coming from video video cards Ryzen 7 7700X will have an MSRP of the same Ryzen 7 5700X. So the price is gonna remain the same for the 7700X, but for the 7800X, it's gonna be higher. How much higher? We don't know. In Ryzen 9 7XYOX, because you know 7950 or 7900, we don't know what X and Y gonna have, uh, but they will have both of them will be over the current generation MSRP of the uh, 7950 or 7950 and 5950X. Uh, so that's the MSRP details. That's just the well, original writing, I guess, but that, that's video cards claims, but we'll see that the pricing is going to remain like this. I, I, I mean, we do know that they're going to go or in price but how much no idea hopefully not too much though like come on amd please next up we have rtx 4080 and 4070 having a dip down lower uh power specs now that has been changed so he's saying that we can expect rtx 4080 with 320 watts and rtx 4070 with 285 watts before if i'm uh not wrong treat it this has been dropped big time like 400 around 400 ish watts and for rtx 4070 maybe it was 320 but now it's 285 probably i'm not sure uh, i forgot the actual tdp or whatever but yeah, they're, they're dropping the power specs. Probably because people were crazy about the power specs that they were giving NVIDIA. So, I guess they are forced to lower the power specs. I mean, if it works, and if it doesn't, you know, hamper the performance, I guess we'll take it. There's a follow-up story on this, and it's coming from Elysium Realm. I don't know who that is, but hey, I don't care. Or specifically, Kitty Yuko. Is saying that there's another SKU available that will be between the 4090 Ti and 4080 and it's coming with 29 gigabit per second 20 gigs of memory 220 bit bus of course and the SKU is 8102 250 340 SKU basically so this is gonna be landing between 4090 Ti and 4080 Maybe 4080 Ti or 4090? Who knows? Like, we don't know. <laughs> no idea. It's a rumor. So, yeah. It's gonna have a uh, CUDA course of 14,848 FP32. So, basically, higher than uh, 4080 and lower than the highest Q that we know. So, let's see what's gonna happen. Again, Copad 7 Kimi coming from. Uh, coming with. Not coming from. Coming with. 
Uh, another story, another update story for RTX 4070, and this time there is a change, and that is 12 gigs, 21 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory, 300 watts, and the Times by Extreme score is higher than 11,000. He goes with another follow-up to this uh, tweet, and that is base clock is 2.3 gigahertz boost clock is 2.6 and you can max out at 2.8 so 2.8 4070 basically going on par with rts 3090 ti at this point the tgp has been obviously we've discussed about it already 285 watts but now with that amount of wattage you can get 2.8 gigahertz max speed which will be around 3090 ti so a huge tier dif difference as you can see so yeah hopefully it's gonna price around 500 to 600 dollars so you basically you're getting uh a 3090 ti around 600 dollars hopefully hopefully i don't know <laughs> we'll see fingers crossed i guess all right that is for today guys and hopefully you enjoyed this there are some good in amount of information the amd gpus and cpus are launching soon i don't know cpus are that's for sure so what do you think are you excited for the nvidia updates that they're making and of course i'm excited for the lower power draw so i think that's a relief i, I think that's the same case for you guys comment below and see ya